have a new case, a new cocktail. We're still in the festive season. So I still do have my little festive earrings on and we're making a little festive drink. Um, this video will be up right after Christmas, but feel free to make it on New Year's. Um, and before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And without further ado, let's get into this week. All right, so this week we are going to be making a cranberry fizz. And what you'll need is cranberry juice, vodka, and orange. You need orange juice, but it says freshly squeezed orange juice. Um, sugar, and then it says sparkling water. I don't like sparkling water, so I figured Sprite would be good to try. And before you begin everything, you're going to need to cook it on the stove. So you basically combine a half a cup of cranberry juice, a half an orange, the orange juice, and then one eighth cup of sugar. And then so you do that on the stove, you heat it up and you pretty much heat it up for like 15 minutes, stirring occasionally. And then you're going to end up with this kind of syrup and that's what's going to be added into the drink. So you keep this refrigerated until you're gonna actually make the cocktail. It's really easy. You literally just put it in a pan and then you heat it up and like it all, the sugar dissolves and you're basically making like a simple syrup, but with cranberry and orange juice. So you're going to need that. And then this week's case, we're going to be talking about the Los Feliz Mansion murders. Um, it's giving me like Amneville horror vibes, um, but yeah. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into it. So first, we are going to be combining the vodka and the cranberry syrup, and then we're going to be beginning with the case. So the Perelson family consisted of the husband, which is named Harold. He was 50 years old. He was a cardiologist. He was super successful. And the wife, which was named Lillian, she was 43 years old. And they had three kids, Judy, they had Judy, Debbie, and Joel. And they lived in Los Feliz, California, which is like a super nice part of LA. They lived up on the hill. They had all the trees around them. They looked like they were doing well in life. They, you know, they looked like the stereotypical family. And Harold, he was super successful. He was a USC teacher as well. So he was making good money. And that all changed on December 6, 1959. So on December 6, 1959, Harold woke up, grabbed a hammer and went on a rampage with his of his family. He first went into his wife's Lillian's room, hit her over the head, killing her. She later would, when the autop autopsy was performed, it would list her cause of death as asphyxiation. So when he, she was hit, blood spewed out of her head and basically she drowned in her own blood, which is so sad. But after Lillian, he went into his daughter Judy's room and swung and hit her over the head. This time not killing her, but instead waking her up where she screamed in horror at the look of her father's face just above her trying to kill her. The scream actually woke up the sister and the brother, Debbie and Joelle. They ran out and was like, what the heck is happening? Like to check out what's going on. And their father actually said, this is a nightmare, go back to sleep. And while this was happening, Judy was actually able to escape and run to the next door neighbor Marshall's house and Marshall actually called the police and headed back into Harold, P the Perelson family house. And so while this was happening, Judy, there's been mixed reports. So it said, some say that Judy stayed at Marshall's house and some say Judy went back with Marshall. If I was Judy, I would definitely have stayed at Marshall's house because I would not want to go back. But basically, Marshall ran up and found Debbie and Joelle and told them to run outside and not look back. And then he proceeded upstairs where he found Harold Perelson all bloodied in his wife and his daughter's blood. And just in a manic state, he just looked and he, Marshall would say that he looked very agitated and he was just like in a weird state, like not even really understanding what was going on. 
And so Harold basically told Marshall, leave, get out, don't bother me. And he went into the bathroom, took a mix of pills and acid, and he would go and lay down and that is where he would die. So it was a murder-suicide. When the police arrived, the house just was a mess. The three kids were able to survive, thankfully, but Lillian was pronounced dead. And this isn't even the craziest part. This is just where it all begins. So the three kids pretty much were never in the media again. They, it was said that they were adopted by their aunt and that was pretty much it. She adopted them and they were never in the media again. So I'm gonna mix this and then I will tell you about the motives, well, the likely motives of why Harold per Perelson decided to kill his entire family. All right, let's see. And now we are going to add the syrup in here and then mix it again. It gets pretty thick, so I think that's what it's supposed to go like because they call it cranberry syrup, so a little syrupy. One more time, mixing again. And we're back. So we're gonna be talking about the motives now. So there, it, nobody knows the real motive behind Harold's crazy rampage, but a lot of people suspect two different motives. The first being a financial motive. Uh, basically, Harold had put a lot of money into this new technology, this medical technology business with a partner. And he basically got swindled out of his own rights to his product by his partner, business partner, and he pretty much lost all his savings. So he sued him, he went through this long legal battle, which obviously cost a lot of money, and all he ended up winning was $20,000 in the settlement. And he had put much, much, much more. So he ended up being just sucked dry of his money because he put all his savings into this business. On top of that, Judy and the kids had gotten into a really bad car accident. So that just put them further into debt and had no money. The second motive was that Harold was suffering from mental health issues. It was said that there was previous suicide attempts and that Lillian was really worried about Harold and that she had wanted him to go into a medical facility and get the help he needed. Uh, he actually didn't do that, but that was another motive. So he bas they basically think he went insane and just murdered his whole family or wanted to murder his own whole family. So that's why I think it reminds me of Amnaville Horror because he just really went insane. Like they said that everything was fine the days before, everything was going fine. Like, yes, they were suffering from some financial issues, but he didn't, you know, there was no hints at what was going to happen. So now we're going to be talking about what happens after the murder and what happens to the house because the house pretty much became a haunted house. It became the real world LA haunted house. So just less than a year after uh, this horrid, horrific murder, a couple named, I don't want this to <laughs> explode. A couple named Julian and Emily Enriquez actually bought the house in a probate auction. And it was said that they never really lived there. They just had storage there. Like neighbors would say that they saw the couple going, bringing boxes into the house, but never staying there. So they don't know if like, you know, the ghost of the Perelson family were there or what, but they basically just used it as storage. So when Emily and Julian passed away, they um, passed it on, passed the house on to their son, Rudy. Rudy was also said to never have stayed there, only kept it as storage and uh he would never he never wanted to sell it at all so basically there was a lot of trespassers there because nobody was living there and there was people that said that there was they were having picnics in the backyard like young people um prostitutes just anybody that could want an abandoned house would go there and just do whatever they wanted because there was no alarm system. There was nobody living there. There was just storage. And the house 
was never touched. So everything was still the exact same, even 50 years later. So there was still their Christmas tree up. There were still presents under the tree. There was still all the same furniture, which is so creepy. I would get that out as soon as possible, but everything was the same. And what is weird is that people, people find this weird is that they had a Christmas tree, but the Perelson family was Jewish. So they said, why would they have a Christmas tree? But who really knows now, but the Christmas tree was still there. Everything was still the same. And because of all these trespassers, they, the only difference that they made was add an alarm system to deter the trespassers from coming in, maybe stealing something or disrupting the neighborhood because the neighbors pretty much kept everything, like all the upkeep. They, you know, they all contributed in to keep the lawn done and the house looking fine. But people that have had, people that have trespassed there have said that they think the house is haunted, like they've heard voices or noises and like somebody said that they got bit by a black widow there, which I don't know how that correlates to being haunted because there's black widows everywhere. But that was another story. So there has lot, been a lot of haunted things going on there and the house is still up and it hasn't been destroyed so you can still go and look at it. So in 2016, the house was actually bought by a couple that knew about the murders and it did not deter them because they had said that there was a lot of interest in the house, like people wanting to buy it, but that couple was the only couple to show up to court and actually purchase the house. So they plan to not destroy it or anything. They just plan to fix it up and live in it. Um, I don't know if I would. Um, I don't even know if I would go near it. I just, bad juju, no. But that's their plan and it's just known as this haunted house now. Uh, you can still go and look at it. There's a ton of pictures online, a ton of theories online. And there is actually a documentary. I think it was made last year in 2020. Um, it's like a seven part series of everything. Like the everything that happened, um, all the haunted house stories. It's really creepy. You should go and watch it. But um, that is the story of the Los Feliz Mansion murders. It's creepy. It's when I first heard this, I was like, it definitely reminds me of anime horror. Like the house takes control of the man and the man pretty much goes on the murder rampage. Um, although there might have been different motives, but pretty much. Um, so we're going to try this drink now. I know this was a fast video, but I thought it was interesting. So if you guys have any case suggestions, you can leave them down below too. Uh, but we're going to try this drink. I'll give it a look. Red festive, festive drink. It looks good. I think this is going to be a really good drink. Um, probably one of my favorites. Sorry about that. Um, I have multiple siblings in this house and one just needed water. So anyways, we're going to try the drink now. I think it's going to be really good. Fingers crossed. I haven't found my favorite drink yet, so hopefully this is it. That's good. It pretty much tastes like a, like a Shirley Temple. Like it's not very cranberry, which I thought it was gonna be, but I don't really like cranberry juice, but it's really good. Like it pretty much tastes like a Shirley Temple. Some people add, um, red grenadine or red grenadine grenadine in it um but i didn't i mean it's still super red and it's not you don't taste the alcohol at all and there's like a an ounce and a half of it in it so you need like an ounce and a half of the tito's six ounces of the sprite but i didn't really measure it out um and then a half a cup and then the orange so yeah, it's really good. I would definitely make this one again. And it's easy. It only requires a couple ingredients. So that is it for me this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back next week with another drink, another cocktail. And cheers, guys.